Hello everyone, this is Richard Carlton and I'm here today with Mr. Jesse Barnum. Uh, this is Jesse, president of 360 Works. Good to see you, Richard. Hey, and we're at the uh, 2014 Developer Conference and this is an interesting uh, video because we're going to be talking about 360's, uh, one of their products, which is the, I guess, remote scripter. Now, right. Now, the reason we're doing this, I don't normally plug third-party products unless they're pretty awesome and that's why we're having this video. So tell us about this product. So Remote Scripter is a way to have one copy of FileMaker, either FileMaker Pro or FileMaker Server, trigger script on some other FileMaker, again, either FileMaker Pro or FileMaker Server. It can pass parameters, it can receive results, so it's a really neat way of having like a networked communication thing of calling scripts on other machines. Now let me tell you how we're using this and then you can explain to me if this is good or bad or whatever. Mm -hmm. So my engineers came to me and they said, hey boss, we need to have FileMaker Server create PDFs. And of course, FileMaker Server and the 13 platform doesn't create PDFs. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, but FileMaker Pro does. Mm -hmm. And of course, you could have a remote robot that mm -hmm. would do it. But they said we could put Pro, FileMaker Pro, install it on the actual FileMaker 13 server. So it's mm -hmm. running at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then the server could tell Pro on the same machine in real time just to go and run a script and create the PDF. And, right. and it does it like lickety-split, almost invisibly, just like quick. Yeah, so, you know, what's neat is that, you know, a lot of the people listening to this were probably familiar with the new Perform Script on Server script step. Remote script is sort of the opposite of that. Instead of the client asking the server to run a script for it, it's a way for the server to ask a client to run a script for it. Ooh, that's cool. So, I've not heard that analogy. So yeah. this is the... Uh, so yeah, so you have an acronym for that? Uh, it says uh, PSOC. PSOC. <laughs> PSOC. Uh, Perform script on client, right? Exactly, exactly. So, and, and the other thing is that while I would say that typically most people do install Remote Scripter and the FileMaker client on the same physical computer as FileMaker server, it doesn't need to be that way. If you want a dedicated like PDF generation station, you could have a Mac Mini sitting in a corner somewhere that, that runs the Remote Scripter plugin and the FileMaker client and could receive networked calls from the server. So the server has to know which client to call. Yes, it does is, need to know the IP address. So does that have to be a static address on that client or? Yeah, it would need to be, I mean, that's one of the conveniences of running it on the same server is you can just put in localhost or 127.001 and you know that you're getting to the right machine. So if you wanted to put it on a separate machine, it would all still work, but yes, it would need to know the IP address of that like PDF generation computer, so obviously you would have that in your settings table or something like that in your FileMaker solution. Now technically, getting a little out of hand here, could you run a script from a client, say a remote client, where you run the script on a server, and then could that script on the server then call your plugin, which yes. runs... So that would be really crazy. So your client way out in the middle, say 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 we're in Texas here, which is DevCon. Uh -huh. We connect to a server in California, uh -huh. but that server in California needs to generate a PDF for us yes. and mail it to us. Yes. So then it could talk to, using your plugin, call the local client on that server to generate the PDF. Yes. It and saves the PDF mm -hmm. there, what, locally on the server? What, in the documents directory? Is that you what it does? Yes, you could have it save it anywhere that FileMaker Pro could save it. So it could save it to the hard drive, it could save it to a container field, it could do anything that you know a normal FileMaker Pro script could. I think generally speaking, the way, again, the most common case is that somebody's going to um, use this for PDF generation and they're going to save it in a container field. That way, you know, whether it's running on the same computer as the server or a network connected, you know, PDF generation dedicated machine, you don't need to worry about how that PDF gets back and forth between the client and the server. If it was running on the same machine as the server, then you've got the flexibility to either put it in a container field or just save it as a temp file on the hard drive somewhere. Well, this is really cool technology. So this is this makes it so that you can instantly tap into all the capabilities of Pro while still using server. And if you have a heavy lifting process that server needs to run and you want to offload that to a pro machine, you can almost multitask in a lot of ways, right? In fact, you could multitask to a lot of different pro machines, couldn't you? Sure, you could have a farm of machines that do a variety of tasks. You can also, you know, it's, it's interesting that we're talking about this because it's not what we originally wrote Remote, remote Scripter for. This is kind of just like an aha moment that, hey, we could do this with it. The original thing we wrote it for was actually for clients to trigger scripts on other clients. So let's say that someone in your um, customer service department clicks a job that says send to production. 
using, you know, you don't need any plugins to just change the status of that in your FileMaker file. But what if you wanted a script to run in the production department that pops open that job and maybe uses the speech synthesizer thing to say, a job is ready, something like that. That's where Remote Scripter would come in, is to be able to trigger from client to client so that um, it could immediately call a script in the production department. It could actually reach out and call a script on the client, telling it to pop a dialogue up or speak something or switch status or do whatever it was going to do. Well, if you were going to do that and you had everyone using DHCP, how would you target the correct client? I think it would be hard using DHCP. It would work better if everyone's IP address didn't change. Right. So right. you could use it with DHCP if you assign like static uh, subnets to people in US and you map them up by address. Sure. That might be one of the reasons that people didn't use it as much for that purpose though, is the question that you're asking is that there is a little bit more overhead of just knowing how to get the address of the computer that you want to call the script on. It's easy if everyone's got static addresses, but it's not as easy if everyone has dynamic addresses. Yeah, well, this was a slam dunk running it on localhost on the FileMaker server once again. That was our original example. Yeah. Right? I mean, you're talking to between pro and server or server and pro on the same machine. It has nowhere to go. No, I mean, I, it's a slam dunk. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it, and it's a totally seamless process to the end user. Um, there's people have set up their own workflows without remote scripter with a similar kind of robot functionality but usually the way they do that is they have the robot machine just running a loop so every 10 seconds or 30 yeah. seconds or whatever it checks to see if there's a job available and it can run that job and you can do that without any plugin but the plugin lets you first of all pass parameters to the script which you can't do um, with just a looping script second of all it will block while that calls. And when I say block, that's a threading term. And what that basically means is that the server script will actually wait for the client to complete its job before the server concludes, which is really important. If you've got somebody who clicks a button on their FileMaker Go device or WebDirect or whatever that says generate me a report of a PDF, it's really not very user friendly to say keep checking back until your PDF is available. You want to just have it wait and then show them the PDF when it's done. And that's what Remote Scripter does is it will cause that FileMaker server script to actually wait for the client to generate the PDF, store in a container field, and then it can resume as if the PDF was generated all as part of that server script. That's good. Question, um, if we have a situation where the pro is not running, the, that app is not running, will it fire the app or is it just kind of stuck? It does need to have FileMaker Pro running on that computer and you do need to have a database open uh, in order to call the plugin function to listen for an incoming connection. So one problem that you might potentially run into is what if the client loses the connection to the server host database? And uh, first of all, that's not that likely if you're running on the same machine as the server. It would only happen sure. if you like restart FileMaker server or reboot the computer. But if you are concerned about that, what you can do is have a locally installed FileMaker file that's not open as a guest of the server at all as a startup item so that whenever it launches it's the one listening for the scripts from the server not a hosted file of the guest so even if the server were to stop and start you would still have your own locally running copy listening ready to run that script whenever it gets called by FileMaker and that locally running copy whenever it gets called it would just connect as a guest of the server do what it needs to do and either stay connected or disconnect sure yeah. sure well, excellent. So that's Remote Scripter by 360 Works. Yep, and we've got a YouTube video. So if you want to go on YouTube and search for like Remote Scripter PDF, then you'll find a step-by-step -step instruction on how to set this whole thing up. Good. Well, that solves an important uh, limitation in the FileMaker platform, and thanks. that's what these uh, integration videos are about. So thanks, Mr. Uh, thanks, Mr. Jesse. I almost called you Sam. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. The, uh, the, the Barnum Brothers that run 360 Works. Now, how long have you uh, been in business now? Uh, we've been working since 96, so this is 18 years now, and it's been 18 really fun years. And it's Sam and Jesse Barnum both. They own the company. Yep. Good. All right. Well, we'll see you. All right. Thanks, thanks a lot.